Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. It's that time of the year where one thing is on everyone's mind. And no, it's not just the heats, it's also marks. Because marks are coming in, CBSC results, ICSC results, they've all just come a short while back and now the rush for college admissions is starting and everyone is out there worrying about cutoffs, worrying about the percentages that they need to get and really starting to panic by saying that if I haven't got 97 or 98 or 99 or some ridiculous percentage like that, my life is over. What am I going to do for the rest of my life? So in this episode of The Big Fight, we're going to try and address that central premise. Yes, unfortunately, the education system, whether it's India or abroad for that matter, do tend to reward a certain high academic excellence. And it's, at, by, it's often measured by marks. But is that the only way it should be? And also, at a broader level, if you haven't got the marks that you really think you should have got or if you, they've been disappointing, does that really mean that, that, you know, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Or are there paths that can be taken very easily? Uh, and joining us to discuss that, we have an absolutely fantastic panel, starting with Mr. Dinesh Singh, former Vice Chancellor of Delhi University, one of the universities which has really set the benchmark of those 98 and 99% mark cutoffs. Um, also somebody who taught me maths or tried very hard to teach me maths when I was in college. So it's, it's wonderful, sir, to have you, have you here with us. Um, somebody else, Sohail Seth, uh, a managing partner of Council Age, uh, done an absolute wonderful job despite having failed, what is it, Sohail, eight times or nine times? So <laughs> twelve. Twelve times every year he failed. But you broke my record, so I'm happy. <laughs> no, I, I, I have. No, once in a while. <laughs> Well, okay, no, actually he didn't ever fail, but Suhail, it's great to, great to have you with us. Um, it's wonderful to have with us Annie Koshi, principal of St. Mary's uh, School. We have with us Vineet Gupta, who's the MD of Jamboree Education, but also founder and trustee of Ashoka University, which is fast becoming one of the most prestigious universities in India, and a university that says it doesn't necessarily only look at Mark. And Sanil Sachar, an author and an entrepreneur, who says he's managed to do a heck of a lot without getting really good good marks and that's the way it should be joining us from mumbai biswapati sarkar executive creative director of the viral fever pleasure to have you with us and from pune we are being joined by anu aga uh, one of our top uh, best known indian business women and also a social worker thank you all so much for being with us let me start off with the key premise it's often fashionable uh, to say well, you know don't worry too much about marks must be an all-round personality and all of that Maybe that's what all of us also genuinely believe is the right way that children should be brought up. But at the end of the day, if you are saying that to go forward in life, you have to get into a good college and a good university, whether it is in India or abroad, at the end of the day, those marks and those transcripts, don't they matter? Well, if you ask me personally, I don't think they matter. And my own experience has been in life with lots of people. And just some time back, I met a former principal of one of India's most prestigious public schools. And he said he had three sons. The elder two were absolutely the tops in their studies. They did exceptionally well. The youngest was absolutely hopeless. Wouldn't be, you know, almost finding it difficult to pass any exam. And he says the youngest is the happiest and also the most successful in life. And I think there's a story and a moral there. So we need to be careful about that. The thing I worry about is parental pressure that insists, particularly the middle class section of India, that their child must score and do well. And I don't even know what is a good college. Okay, you don't even know. So in life, marks don't matter. Actually, that is an area which we may well get a consensus around. But let me just see what, 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 what you feel. So you right. know, I, I completely agree with, uh, with the nation and what he says. I think there's peer pressure, there's peer envy. Today, parents are competing for which schools their children go to. You know, schools have become brands in themselves, which I don't know is a good thing or a bad thing. Finally, after your first job, people stop even asking you what your academic record was because it's what you did last that matters. I think we've created a warped system of education in this country. Uh, successive governments are to blame. Our academics are to blame. The way we measure students. We don't look at all-round students. Our concept of all-round is, oh, he must play three games and must be reasonably good in studies. We don't encourage people to think. But we so encourage fair, people to compartmentalize. In it's not only in India. If you look abroad, if you're looking at anywhere in the world, you say, oh, I'm coming from an Ivy League uh, college. Well, more college, people get I'm into Yale than they get into SRCC because of this stupid examination system oh. that we have inflicted in this okay, country so on our hapless students. Different aspects, and I want to come to all of them. So yeah. number one is, 
is our examination system and what's happening in Indian universities of say 97, 98, 99 percent cutoff, is that the right question? I think you are bang on that that is one issue which we need to look at. But overall, coming, getting into a top quality university, it's not only in India where it matters. Anywhere in the world, if you say, oh, I'm coming from a Harvard or an Oxford or a whatever it is, it, it, it means something. It, it, you find it easier to get a job, doesn't it? No, of course, it's a demand supply situation. The problem in India is we have very few brilliant institutions and there are some institutions which are brilliant but are not brilliantly known. So they're like ships in the night. A ship sails at night but you don't see it. So do we actually hanker or worry about branded education or do you actually look at real education? I'm not trying to say this because Vineet is here. I've heard glowing things about Ashoka because it's created a new form of measuring academics qua students, not the other way around. Today you're measuring students through academics. And my view is that unless you allow people to use their thinking faculties rather than learn by rote, which is what happens. I mean, how the hell can you score 100 on 100 when you're writing on Shakespeare and Shaw? How can you score 100 on 100 when you're discussing history unless you're only discussing Rahul Gandhi? So I cannot understand for my life how you get 100 on 100 in liberal arts subjects And a lot of it is country. based on rote learning, which is a I fundamental mean, it's, it's issue. But, but okay, but the importance, let me just come back to the basic theme and get everyone's first position and then I'll, then I'll dive and into And if you want to fight, after. these educationists are to blame. You can fight with them in two minutes. <laughs> I'll just allow you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the nation's trying to figure out how to respond. Her also? You're to blame. Yeah, I was just so thinking you're not going to get a fight, but I'm so glad you know, we've got something to fight about. I think it's one of the cultural myths that we feed our children that marks will get you admission into colleges, that hard work will get you marks. We know that the reality is that there's a combination of factors that actually goes with hard work, that goes to get you the marks. And uh, because we feed them this, children sort of believe and then they start to have a self-image, oh, I didn't work hard enough, I should have worked harder, I shouldn't have done this, I should have done that. And it leads to so much of you know, self-analysis, unnecessarily so. And of course, also, uh, the question begs to be answered is what is success? Like Dinesh said, you know, the youngest is the happiest, you know. So, yeah. uh, so we so, know so that... Yes, one is success in life, but the first part of what you said, we teach children a myth that yeah, an you need to get marks myth, to yeah. get into college. Yeah. Why is that a myth? Because you de do need... I'm not saying that the system is the right system no, but or the your wrong question system. was, do you need marks today, to be if successful you need to get, Today, in life. if you want to get into today, uh, given the present situation, if you want to get into a top university, you want to go to Delhi University, you want to go to the IITs, you want to go to an Ivy League institution, you want to go to Oxbridge, you need marks. That's no, sometimes the truth. Sometimes even if you have money, it helps, you know, <laughs> to get into a I mean, okay. can you so imagine you if marks? you were from Lucky well, University, money. if you were from Lucky University and not Oxford, yeah, would you be I the group CEO of, of, uh, of NDTV? Well, I, that's, a, my, my, that's, that's an interesting question, but it doesn't matter probably 20 years after my career, but yes, when I walked in for my first job interview and I went and met Madhu Treyan, it She asked did you it, about your school marks? No, it, she didn't ask you about my no, school marks, but the fact exactly. that I said that I'm from Oxford and Stanford may well have helped. connected in any case. Yes. <laughs> and good looking at that time. Good no, but I, I really time. feel no, that No, the fact that I went in and said these are universities I went to, did it make yeah, a difference? Perhaps it did. something? Yes, I, I know Aga. Yes, ma'am. Come, coming to you. You might be able to get a good job and a position in life, but is that what you call success in life? Correct. To me, that's a limited success because it's who you are and what kind of a life you lead that defines success and not your pay and position. That's one thing. Secondly, in India, you can get very good marks by learning by rote, following the guidebooks, going for tuitions, so it doesn't even really show whether you are a curious person, creative person, competent person. No, I think your point is well taken, but I think the substantive question that I was asking is, and let's try and set these aside into what the reality on the ground today is and what it should ideally be. So the first thing which I was trying to debate with, with Annie about was that in the present situation, does it help to go to a top university when people are going and looking for a job? Perhaps yes. And if it does help, to, and I'm taking devil's advocate out here, I'm not saying that this is what the ideal situation should be. I'm just saying given the present world, let's accept the reality of it. Does it help to go to a top university? Perhaps it does. And to get into a top university, do you need marks? Yes, probably you do. 
let me say that yes, maybe you got into NDTV because of your Oxford, but to succeed in NDTV, it's not your marks. That's so rare. I think a lot of people may have an entry because of marks and not succeed at work. All right. Now what I was saying, Vikram, is that when we talk to children, we never advise them of the next step only. We know that you're going to go ahead. We also know that there are kids who get into, you know, colleges that are absolutely nowhere. But because of their whole enthusiasm of life and where they go, they go far ahead much later. So, yeah, it's great to get into Stephen's if you want. But then, you know, I also know that Khalsa College has gone ahead. So what's wrong in getting into Khalsa College or some other, you know? So there's nothing like this. Ultimately, it depends on the individual, I think, of what you make. Now, we know Stephen Knights who spend their whole life in the so-called cafe and never move beyond that. That, yeah, well, See, I, you know, just very quickly, I don't think it matters what you've studied and how well you've done. It also matters on how your personality has been groomed, partially by education, partially by parents. I mean, I've seen people who've been to IIT, you know, mess up politically. So it's, <laughs> it's odds and evens. About? No <laughs> pun intended, it's odds Any, and evens. Anybody in particular? Okay. <laughs> we, we'll take a guess. Let me come to you now, because um, you slightly different philosophy. But at the end of the day, even when it comes to Ashoka, you keep hearing ru reports and rumors that, you know, marks are starting to become really important. And you're not taking in people just because they're a good all-rounded person, person. You are looking at their academic record, because it does matter. Yeah, so I think to re react to your first point that you made, that good marks are important to get into a top college, I think that fundamentally is a problem that institutions need to solve. Mm that what is the measure by which they are going to take candidates. I think more so the problem in India is that because marks is the only quantitative thing, that's the only thing they look at, right? And I think that's a problem that institutions really need to solve for that. What is the right, what's the right kind of student they want to take? And some of the top institutions. And I think that's the reason that because institutions don't define any other criteria, the only thing they look at is marks, right? And then this creates the pressure among students, parents, etc. So I think, I believe that's the first part. So academic institutions really need to reinvent themselves. Now to your second point, which was specifically asking me at Ashoka, I mean, uh, while we look at marks, but that's not the only thing we look at. So our range is very broad. We don't have a cutoff. Uh, for the last class, the class that we took in last year, our range was as broad as 76%, right up to 9900%. So massive range, right? And we've taken students. So you would take in somebody who'd got just 76%, and I'm saying just because 76% these days would be like, what, 30%? Yes, and we right? would look at the student holistically, marks, extracurriculars, impact, personality, interview, writing ability, and then make a comprehensive assessment. But to answer your question, yes, we would. No, but how, are the, how are the kids doing at Ashoka, if you, were to, if you were to judge them now, based on how they are thriving and how they are doing, are you seeing a vast gap between the 99% kid and the 78 or 80%? You know, I think the unfortunate bit is, Vikram, that I believe, especially the two so-called national boards, CBSC and ISC, you almost see a grade inflation, you know, because of a lack of a better term. I mean, I think these boards are competing with one another to really award high marks. I mean, to Sohel's point, how can you get 100 in English? So the problem today is that you will still find somebody who's an 80, 82 and still excelling but on the other hand, you will find lots of students with 96, 97 in English history, and they are not doing well, right? So grades is actually not an indicator. I, I think that's one of the most important points which we need to talk about here, that do those marks really mean exactly. anything? Because it rewards a certain it's, type of learning, yeah. not necessarily... And I think that's the worry I see over the... I mean, when, we, when I graduated in 91, that, it was, yeah. that was not the case. Right. You know, you still, you still couldn't... Anything over 80 in English was outstanding. And this thing, I think over the last 25 years, I don't know what is really wrong with these boards that these marks really don't mean much. Okay, so let me come to two other people. Before we come down to the education, let me come to two other people who have their own interesting... Can I say... Yeah, Anu, ma'am, what were you saying? Then I'll come to Sanil. Yeah. What I'm saying is, take the example for Teach for India, which has been an extremely successful movement. It may not pay people well, but it makes a huge difference to our educational scenario what do we look for the fellows? We look for dedication, passion, wanting to make a difference, and a reasonable academic score, not necessarily the best. And they are able to succeed in a huge way 
by changing the lives of hundreds of students under them. To me, that is success. Okay, that is success. Sanil, what is success? Because you, you said, I mean, like, you, you, when I was chatting with you a short while back, you pretty much said, look, I don't care. I, I studied. I got 58% in my boards. I've gone on and become a published author. I'm having a great life, and that's what matters. Success is very ambiguous as a term, uh, as we all, we'll all have different definitions uh, of it. If I had to, uh, one question is, would I get into any university with 58%? Uh, does 58% mean I'm a bad student? Or does it mean I'm an overall student with other extracurriculars? I think many people stop questioning why someone gets a B or a C. Uh, they just look at the person who's got an A. Uh, what tends to happen is if someone asks me why did I get 58% is because maybe my memory is not good. Because when I studied, it seemed like a memory game rather than trying to get people to learn and think in a different manner. I think that's where... And especially in the Indian education system, you're being rewarded for your memory, being able to cram and rattofy. In which is system. exactly why most of us eat almonds in the morning. It's because we're told to have a better memory, not have a different way of thinking. We, I rather brainstorm than get brainwashed. And uh, I think there was the latter when I was studying. Okay, uh, interesting, interesting way of looking at it. Somebody else with a different view, uh, view of looking at it. Biswapati Sarkar ended up as one of India's top people from making a laugh, making people laugh, but went through the education, got on to IIT, did IIT Kharagpur, and now here you are doing something completely different. Yeah, uh, I was told from the beginning by my parents was that once you get good marks in 10th and once you get good marks in 12th and if you get into a good college, your life is sorted. Uh, but that's not the case. I mean, that's what our parents have been telling us and that's that's not how it functions. You Each day is a new, brings up a new challenge. Each day is you learn something new, you want to try something out. And that's what happened to me in IIT. I realized that I might have been very good in maths, chemi chemistry and physics, but my true love was filmmaking and writing and acting and that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And uh, I, I clearly understand that why some people might say that grades might get into get you uh, into a good college but how do my maths my marks in maths physics and chemistry judge my ability to write a, a film or say get into fashion designing so those are something which are uh, completely different subjects mismatch, which help right? me you get ended up going to IIT I mean it, it is a mismatch you were um, your story reminds me of the three idiots, I guess. So you, were, you, were, you should have been not going into, you should have not gone to IIT, you should have gone somewhere and else and done something else. education. <laughs> yeah, and Sohail is complaining about subsidizing no, your education. No, I, I guess, no, but that's what, this is a very typical mentality which people hear. People don't realize that it is not important to get a degree just for the job. I was interested in engineering. I wanted to learn engineering. Once I went in, I found my true passion. I wouldn't have probably been here if I wouldn't have gone into IIT. This is this is a very sort of a pigeonholing attitude which we have. Ki if you are from IIT and you you wasted a seat or you wasted subsidized education, but uh, what about uh, IITians who've gone into other fields? There, there wouldn't have been a Manohar Parikar. There wouldn't have been an Arvind Kejriwal apart from these because once you go into a certain area the education is not confined to a classroom you meet new people you discover new things and that that shapes your career differently it it i was probably a 17 year old at that point of time who thought that this is my true calling once i went in i realized that no this is this is not something which i want to do in life and this is something which really interests me and perhaps so eventually filmmaking and your acting is, is probably going to be that my you career. care about is the one thing that's coming but before I come into starting to dissect what's really gone wrong with the way we are marking in our, in our, in our uh, education system, Anuag, let me just ask you a direct question though. If you are confronted in a job interview, would you be sure. looking at the college a person came from or the marks that that person got or would you not when you're looking to hire somebody? No, I would certainly not only focus. I would look at it because it indicates, was the person serious? Did he put in hard work? But a very small percentage would go for marks and the college that they came in. Absolutely. There are other things which I would yeah. be looking at. Because the flip side of that is, as you rightly said, what many people say is that if the person has got into XYZ college or got XYZ marks, it means that that person had the ability to really work it, to put in that effort which is required for that. Yeah, but in an interview, 
you ask so many questions which are common sense questions. For example, how much does a cricket ball weigh? One of my engineers used to ask. And engineering students didn't know. Very common sense questions. General reading. How many books have they read? Uh, if a person only has got good marks at the cost of everything else, I don't think he or she would succeed at work. Right. So the next thing, uh, let, me, let me turn to you now because the entire question of marks and the cutoff really did start from Delhi University. Now, if you look abroad, even if I'm talking about America or the Ivy Leagues, yes, they look at marks a lot, but it's, let's say, 60-65%. England is probably more. It's about 80-85% as marks or 90% as marks. In India, and specifically in Delhi University, which is the worst culprit, if you like, in that, it's only about that cutoff. It doesn't matter how fantastic a person you are, but if you have got 96% when the cutoff is 98%, you don't have a choice. That person with 98% gets in. Is that a wrong policy? Oh, I agree with you entirely. It is a wrong policy. My personal experience in life with lots of students indicates that you know, marks are hardly a good indicator of what the person is really like. You, know, you do well in an exam, you have a good day, you memorized well, you succeed. But also, there are other factors that could make you succeed and which will make your experience as a student worthwhile. And nothing is taken into account but the marks. But I'll tell you something. But why weren't you able to change? You were Vice Chancellor of Delhi yeah. University for we're, such a long time. We are bound by, you know, in, this is a government institution unlike Ashoka, which has the freedom to move around. You know, St. Stephen's College is part of the University of Delhi, and it had a different system. But the courts intervened, and they said, you have to go by a certain procedure, which has to be reasonably objective. You cannot. So St. Stephen's would rely significantly on an interview. When I, joined, yes. when I joined the college, when you were teaching me there, that's what the system used to be. You had to get a certain, you had to get, they looked at your marks, but at the end of the day, it was the interview. That's that how I got in. You see, I didn't have very high marks in school. You both went to the same college? Yes. <laughs> he taught me also at that same college. <laughs> and I, I tried to do really a good job. About no, it. no, I'm saying why blame the college then? <laughs> <laughs> you have plagiarized that <laughs> from, from Manish Shankar I, uh, <laughs> Yes. But I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to the, the road. By the way, Vikram, this is one of those rare occasions on the big fight when everybody seems to agree. You know, well, I, not <laughs> entirely. I'm starting to. I'm going to now precipitate. You're not going to succeed. I can tell you that. But coming back, no, to this, because it's a, he. He said it's your fault. I mean, so he literally looked at you and said that why is it that the educationists have not been able to force a change in this? If everyone agrees, why and, aren't we changing and, and it? And what would you do? And teaching so standards. What would you do? How would you admit? You have <clears> to have an objective procedure. There are lots of courses in the university where they have an entrance exam. So your marks don't really matter too much. Mm. You need to have a minimum score and you're eligible to sit for the entrance exam. No, how would I admit? I do it completely differently. I would actually simply say, and this is what maybe educationalists should all get together, go to the government and say, look, the present system is completely ridiculous. Why can't we have a system where we said, look, there's a certain weightage that is given to marks. You have to get to get into Delhi University, okay, you should get more than 90% or more than 95% or some such rough figure. But then after that, when we are admitting people, you should be allowed and entitled to look at other things. Was there an extracurricular activity that the person Oh, they do did? look at that. Are they? You're mistaken. They do look at that. Of course. You get a certain but gradage, let right? Let me tell you something. No, Vikram. There's, there's a bit of a misunderstanding here. I think misinformation. Let me tell you something else. The University of Delhi for the ma past many decades has expanded to full capacity. It admits about 55 to 60,000 students each year. Cannot do more. Not possible. It's completely full to the brim. But the number of students who apply has been increasing exponentially Stay each well. year. It's a huge increase. It's gone up many fold. What do you do? It's a demand supply. Somewhere you ha even when you put a 98% cutoff, a college is flooded with many, many times more applicants and yeah. the seats it has what do you do and I then you start the process i also what think i think in this kind of a fierce competition to judge other things which are more subjective i think that to me yeah, is the a real courts, challenge the courts intervene in the no, matter no, of how, how do you judge extra because then then, then you'll have, you'll start having people paying money you'll right. start having people saying so I think are you well connected for the government and all of these colleges i think that is really the huge challenge that how do you judge something which is non-objective